So when Elvis, you know, hit the hit the stage, the country kids were his first fans because he sang on Louisiana Hayride and all that. Then when he made his first national tour, one of the places he came and played was in San Antonio. I was from Blanco, and uh, and we knew about Elvis because of Louisiana Hayride. So three of us pooled our money to buy enough gas. I think gasoline was nine cents a gallon. But, but we pooled our money, we got in somebody's old car, and off we went to San Antonio to the city hall scene. And when we got there, I mean, there was just an ocean of cars and an ocean of kids like us. And we had no idea other people knew about it. So, of course, we went, we went to the front and pushed our way through and so on. But there were no tickets left at all. So I said, I think I was 15, and I said, well, I mean, I'll try to find us a way to see him. So I walked around the corner of the city coliseum, and there was a tree that grew up along the side. So I climbed the doors and went up on the second floor with bars on it. And uh, so I climbed up the tree, and I got to the window, and I reached out for the bars, and I looked in, and there was Elvis Presley being interviewed by some reporter. And uh, he looked over and he saw me, and I was going, and, and he, said, he said, well, who are you? And I said, well, I'm Billy Whitman. And he said, well, what are you doing in that tree? <laughs> I said, well, I said, uh, Jack and Joe and I came to see you, but there, there are no tickets. And, uh, and I was trying to find a way to sneak in. And he said, well, you don't have to sneak in. And then he reached behind him, and there was a dispenser for paper towels. And he pulled out a paper towel and uh, took a pencil from the reporter who was interviewed, started writing, he looked at me and said, where are you from, Billy? And I said, Blanco. He said, no, never heard of that. And I said, well, if you were going from here to Johnson City, you would have brought through. And he said, well, I've never heard of that either. But anyway, he finished writing, he handed it to me, and it's, it's there in that case. And, and it says, to the doorkeeper, let these three fellows in. I know them. It was risky. Wow. So we did indeed get in on that. The doorman tried to, to keep the note, but I wouldn't let him in. And uh, we sat fourth the fifth row, just utterly perfect. Now, when we got back to Blanco, of course, we were huge heroes. With and... Um, but there was a friend of mine named Darcy Lee Smith. And Darcy Lee didn't, didn't we couldn't find him to take him with us when we went. And he was really pissed. And he stayed pissed off for years. And finally, he got the money together. He got tickets to go to an Elvis Presley show, I think at the Atlantic. Atlanta, Atlanta, which, yeah, which is a Aladdin, or the Flamingo, whatever it was. But he got tickets to the table right down front and went to the Elvis show with his wife. And Elvis came out and he played, and finally there was an intermission. And Elvis went off stage, and Dorsey Lee saw him go out the curtains. And Dorsey Lee turned to his wife and he said, I'm going to see if I can get to him and just tell him how much I appreciate what he has done all these years. So she said, all right. So Darcy Lee left the table, walked around the hall and this hall and so on, and all of a sudden he ran to the corner, and there was Elvis leaning against the wall being interviewed by a television crew. So Darcy Lee stood there, and um, finally Elvis finished. And then Elvis glanced over and saw Darcy Lee still sitting. And he kind of gave him a look, and Darcy Lee walked up. And he said, Mr. Presley, I'm Darcy Lee Smith. And he said, I've been a fan of yours since you started. And I just want to shake your hand and say hello. And Elvis said, well, where are you from, Darcy Lee? <laughs> and, uh, and Darcy Lee said, uh, Blanco, Texas. <laughs> and Elvis said, Blanco, Texas. He said, you know Billy Whitney? <laughs>